I stand, one little Bangladeshi girl in New York, dazzled by the lights and burnt by the red of Times Square, lost in the psychedelic paradise which stinks just a little of madness. Two feet glued to a tiny island. White eyes are coming at me. Can't escape their glare. But I don't move because I'm stuck. Squashed in the shadow of buildings so tall, want to hide in the blue gap we call the sky and rest my head on fluffy clouds. End up on a sidewalk, alone, downtown. Follow the line of a lonely shadow that guides me to a bar which reeks of funky tunes. A couple chat while the world explodes behind them. I stand in a corner, intoxicated by a woman draped in a snake. Return to the Hudson, rest my pink shades on the table, blow out the light, and let the blue swirls entertain me. Michael! I'm, I'm going to give you my number. Do you have it? Did they give you my number? Did they give you my number? Yeah. I think you ran away. Oh, good. Where to, lady? The cabbie speaks with a Bangla twang. His face is familiar. I've seen him before in Borishal or maybe Brick Lane. His name's Kabir, just like my father's. Where are you from? I ask. He's quiet for a moment, checks his mirror, locks eyes and says, Bangladesh. Tells me that he's studying computer science. Tells me that driving a yellow cab is a good job. That one day, he'll go back home. Maybe. Music bleeds through the walls and soaks my skin. He poses in t-shirt and baggy jeans that rest real low. Needle pricks, beats blush, fingers slide on vinyl, pink shadows dance, and the sound dribbles, spits, vomits, and fights for room to scream. And he's lost, and his body sways, jerks, jumps, and heaves, and he's wired on sound. When I wake up, splinters of morning fight with the dark. Light caresses his decks and kisses his glass bong. And for one moment, this stinking pit is radiant. And I understand why he can't go back to Bangladesh. Step into a world of 1,000 apartment blocks where nice little old ladies stumble and bendy legs creak. Can I help you? I ask. Get lost, she shouts, as her back breaks with a crack. Anorexic trees pose under leafy umbrellas. Pigeons party on thick green carpets, and a dead man sticks to a park bench. Flickers and fades. Flickers and fades. New York flickers and fades. Too many people everywhere. Need a rickshaw. Getting lost. Nowhere to go. Walk along streets bathed in light, cluttered with shorts and trainers, stilettos and loafers, baseball caps and white t-shirts. As the sun goes to bed, a helicopter farts into the universe and people meander in the golden haze, unperturbed by the smell. Glimpse a hot dog store manned by a Bengali, wait for the lights to blink in a city where the tips of skyscrapers prick the bottom of the nosy sky. Keep on walking, don't know where, until I glimpse that other world. Where kids dance with sprinklers, scream and shout. 
where a muller sits on Green Street quietly reading his paper, where I recognise the elegant curl of Bengali script. end up waiting at a deserted station, not sure where the train will take me, and it feels like I've reached the full stop at the end of the world. Then I remember a little place called Briarwood on the Jamaica line. Briarwood, Jamaica, NYC. A place where rubbish cuddles up to a tree trunk and pink candy floss swirls in the sky. A place with a grocery store that sells bags of holdy, frozen Elish match, 2,000 cans of carnation milk. A place where two friendly men strip chickens, toss, slice, and chuck those nasty bits in the bin. Venture out into the streets of Astoria, lined with sari shops, video shops, 24-hour kebab shops, and I see scenes from Brick Lane, neon lights, pink, green and blue, lashing best kebabs. And I listen to my mother tongue and then a hint of New York drawl dribbles in and reminds me where I am. Briarwood, Jamaica, NYC. Drift into my desh, Bangladesh. Get stuck in two lines of rickshaws, trapped in a sweaty sandwich of baby taxis. Rough stones in the road make me jump and sway. Climb up to the rooftop to glimpse the view. High up there, close to the blanket of the sky, away from the dust that built the noise. I can see my desh, you can see it all through the light and giant leaves because down there on the street in the fuzzy glare they all stare and call me a bidishime, a foreign girl. But I'm one of you. No, you're a bidishime. And so I hide on the roof, keep a lonely bucket company, watch little boys wander half naked down dusty streets, listen to the nasty song of crows and feel my nose crinkle in the heat. But one day, I decide to swallow my fear and travel far to a place where my father used to run and play.
The light invites me in for tea, where four litchies huddle up to play, where a toothbrush is dazzled by a cup of light, where Mango meditates on the bed, where Dadu snores in a soft little heap, where two stone windows hold the world in their corners, where a table, a chair, and one cup of lemon tea are waiting for me. Chacha seeks refuge under the cool of the fan, in that room where the light hits the leg of the chair, that chair where perhaps my father used to sit. Dadu wakes, her white hair in a mess, stoops down for her jog and disappears. I wait for her to sit on the bed. She watches me and I watch her. I recognize those toes, my father's toes, my little sister's toes, such wisdom in those ancient toes. She giggles, an old rich girly giggle. She calls me Paggle, which means mad. And I reply, yes daddy, I'm a Paggle Saggle, a mad goat. Dadu loiters out back in crumpled nighty, fondling a mango that's fallen from a tree. Silver hair exposed, skin thin, wrinkled and brown, eyes big and bright like some kind of exotic bird. She stares at me and mutters, what are you doing? And then she leaves me to sit on the porch where the sun teases her toes, rump balanced on plastic stool, green book in palm, and I listen to the gun-gun of her chant. Don't want to disturb her, just watch her hunched up frame, swear a little now and then. She doesn't look up, can't stand my western dress, complains I wear clothes that are for neither man nor woman, make an offering of pomegranate and papaya. She likes fruit, she has no teeth, you see, she can suck, can't chew. Dadu shouts for a knife, hacks off the hard shell, peels, pulls and picks, slices the papaya, offers me a piece with wet wrinkled fingers, and we sit eating fruit. There's a mess of skin and splinters of red, offered to clean up, but she tells me to eat. Where's the bin, I ask? Dadu tells me to throw it. Throw it where, I ask? She points to a dirt patch and tosses the rest. Standing opposite her, fingers sticky, face dripping, I guzzle down my fruit. And as I chew, her toes wiggle, tiny and delicate in their wrinkled perfection. Her hair falls across her face, looks slightly agitated and says, I have to do namas now. Take the hint. As I get up to go, she dumps a mango and pushes me away with a shoe. Dadu escapes under the net, hides away from my third eye, loses herself in the world of prayer. Soothed by the sway of her body, the gun-gun of her chant. Notice a metal cup and bowl, the bowl from which she eats soggy rice and milk every day. And on her bed is a thin cloth bag which hides a wall of stuff collected over decades. As I watch, the heat creeps all over my body. I cry out for a fan, but Dada doesn't like the whir. So I lie under a thick sheet of sweat and feel my face shrink. At first light, gaze through the bars on my window, slip upstairs past Mona Lisa, find myself on the roof where my father used to sleep at night to escape the sun's wrath, and struggle to say goodbye to my Borishal sky. Then I leave this pit on college road, neglected like a shrine in the last stages of its elegant crumble, and travel to Select in search of lush tea and the shimmer of Shorma. Brown skin.
toes curled up in warm mud. Two tiny nipples peep out to say hello. Pregnant jackfruit dangle overhead, poised to give birth. A jug poses, painted by the mirror. Glimpse scars like a frog's webbed feet on a timid face. Chat to a cow chilling out in the shade. Hello. And wonder why guys smell mud on the giant steel pot. They look at me and I can see it in their eyes. What the hell are you doing here, you crazy biddishy man? Wait, wait, wait. Two dozen chicken's feet and half an intestine greet me. A chicken is casually ripped up and cut to tiny shreds. Feeling a little sorry for the chicken and a little sick, I sneak away to the market in search of pineapples and mangoes. stumble across a stall. Feels like the whole world is staring at me. Ten million fish wait with sharpened teeth. I run away to drip drops, delicate blades of grass and baby shoots, to paddy fields, shady houses and leafy pathways that will take me away to that other place where an old sandal lives and that little girl who likes to play hide and seek by herself. She doesn't care about my pink shades or jeans. She doesn't ask any questions. She just pinches leaves, trips over her feet, and forgets to wipe her nose. The sun is slipping away over the river Shorma, fat long and silver, surrounded by steep banks and lumpy beds of stone, shiny like Maltesers, hand laid one by one. Look into the water, it gleams and shimmers but stinks like shit. A lady sits, rump balanced on two hard bumps. She's looking out at Shorma, searching for some kind of comfort. Her face is sad, want to know what's troubling her, but don't have the words to ask. So I leave her to dwell, to contemplate, to brood. Leave her with the stink of the river Shorma. Venture up to my rooftop haven for one last nibble. And then I escape through a mist of purple babies to another desh, where Bangla people came many years ago and made a little town with Bangla things and Bangla smells and sounds. When I walk down Brook Lane, I see golden cotton ball fluff wafting over Truman, red brick council flats, a guy enjoying the tickle of the sun on his neck, the Bangladeshi jungle, tree fondling shadows, hanging saris blowing in the wind, a chicken bone lying on the street, a golden wand crisp packet washed up in the grass, an Asian girl with a thick black plait wearing jeans that go up a crack and a top that clings to her flat chest.
I see an old man with bendy legs, a long grey beard, walking with averted eyes, propped up by his stick. Another girl could be a woman, a granny, don't know because she's hidden inside a cave of black. She sees her world through a slit of light and her toes are naked. Two boys with gelled up hair slide past. Hello nice pussy, they heckle. Gives your number, darling. Keep my head down, don't dare look up, in case I grin. Bloated jackboots spill onto the streets. A coke can watches trendies drink peppermint tea. A little old lady emerges from a disused hut. She's wearing a pink jacket and slippers. Walks a few steps forward in tiny pin steps. Watch until a lump fills my throat and can't watch anymore. And then she turns away and shuffles off to her hut. At dusk, the sound of prayer drifts over Brick Lane. Melodic, profound, guttural and solemn. Pause to listen, even try and join in, but feel self-conscious like I'm taking the piss when I'm not. Escape to EastEnders for a little snack filled with locals chewing on kebab rolls, drenched in chilli and minty yoghurt. It's a no-nonsense place cluttered with wooden chairs and mirrored walls. The owner stands in the doorway, his hair cropped short, his pallor shiny, his clothes worn and his teeth stained red from chewing too much pan. He stares at his black Mercedes parked out front, and I wonder how many kebabs he had to sell to buy it. I hear a fluttering of a flute, a tink tink, followed by a high pitched voice and a tabla beat floating from a shop. Drift down to Brick Lane at night, blushing with neon. There's a stink of onions and rubbish in the air. Shop fronts are plastered with posters of Bollywood stars. Men with moustaches wearing tight white pants. Cars speed through the back streets of the east. And the people of London are crying out for a curry. Dreadlocks spin some decks outside the vibe. Trendies in suits guzzle down pints. People spinning, shaking, tripping on the trip of Brick Lane. past the babble, enter the Clifton boarded up for years, dusty fireplace, faded pattern of wallpaper, blood simple light, wafts into empty rooms, two socks sing in the light, and I climb up to the roof once more to soak up the looming blocks, the sloping rooftops, the wonky windows and the crumble. Soak it all up as I watch the scrap heap being cleaned up and the old lady kicked out of her hut. Soak up the peel, the pinch, the stink and I stand, one little Bangladeshi girl, in Brook Lane. 